Let me introduce you to the Mad Corpse team on the left hand side in the blue trunk, starting in the top plane. It is Mad Corpse P. Judy Jindl. That's a name and a half. Uh, in the mid lane, we, uh, he's on the oof, by the way. In the mid lane, we have Insomnia on the Tassadar with the Master Skin. We have Jellic will be on the Kerrigan. We have the Prog, or Alex the Prog will be on the Arthas, and Kit Kat, whose name is Delicious, will be on the Valor. And on the right side, the team in the red trunks, in the top lane, we have Das uh, playing Muradin with that uh, Candy K Muradin skin, and in the mid lane, Happy Zerg is on top of Stitches, and bot lane, pretty stacked with Hydra on, on Sergeant Hammer, Turek playing Brightwing, and QQQ aka Dimaga playing Nazibo. Yep, and we can see Hydra already starting with mining up this bush massively. And yeah. Oh, Arthas getting a lot of mines on top of Arthas. Taking a large chunk of his health. Uh, Jellic tried to engage on Turek there, but no damage was dealt. Hydra did take quite a hard hit, but as long as he stays near Brightwing, that will all be healed back up. And because the heal up for uh, Mad Corp is in the top lane, is not going to be able to help oh, good team. route here on Hydra. There comes the pull, and they get the final uh, first blood, rather. Uh, first blood does go to Mad Corpse. Yep, very nice pick there by them. And we did see Insomnia ditch his lane for a bit, but he missed out on one minion worth of XP. Very much a worthwhile run. Yeah, for sure. Nazibo and Brightwing still sticking in this bottom lane. I'm kind of surprised that they're not uh, inching way further, but ooh, that, that's the exact danger here. Another root, and there comes the final blow out of Jalik, but she's quite low as well. Uh, that's good away though. That's actually from Alex, he used Death Coil. Oh, okay. Ah, Death Coil was the final kill. Looked like <laughs> it was the, um, the strike from below from Kerrigan. Indeed. So right but now, now we have that triple stack again in the bot lane, and uh, once Hydra is, is in there, um, I think they can advance a little bit further, especially if it's only Kit Kat down here. Yeah, Kit Kat has been left completely alone. We did see Arthas kind of roam up to the bot to the mid lane, got nothing, and is now roaming up to the top lane to try and help Je uh, Junal up here w to take this shrine. And Dez, now in a pretty tough position, has already used his jump to engage here. And there's the root, Dez still jump is just come back up and that was one of the oh, things nice the stun nice safety stun to keep himself alive and like you said incredible stun to keep himself alive bot shrine has however gone over to yard team yep uh they have pretty solid control right now again the mines are stacked here but hydra he's seen what happens uh, once arfus gets back in there so they're gonna stay and play a little bit safer stay in the back and maybe try to get a little bit of damage onto Kit Kat, but Alex the Proc comes back in there, misses his root, and Hydra just oh, boosts boy. out of there. But look at the damage she's taken. The, the damage is amazing, but I'm more impressed by just the the pathing that Hydra yeah. took to get Incredible out. Incredible control. Amazing dodges. If that was an action movie, it would have <laughs> been James Bond, him zigzagging through traffic and enemy gunmen to try and get it. But the first Dragonite is going to go over to Mad Corpse as they did take control of that bottom dra uh, shrine with that. And Insomnia going to be taking it first and going to rotate out to the mid lane. Demaga has been caught out here. He gets pulled in and down he goes. Oh, a nice Primal Jack. Grasp. Jalik definitely on top of things tonight uh, with his stunts. Or um, rather, uh, Roots there. And Hydra uh, trying to save this bottom lane. Looks like there's rotation back into mid lane. Insomnia just jumping on top of these towers, and they're already out of ammo. So he's gonna do quite a bit of damage here. Happy Zerk and Turk trying to stop him. But yeah, the tower does go down. Most of his health down here. He has 10 seconds left in this thing. And who is it inside? That is Insomnia. So... I can't remember which one, Insom which one Insomnia is. Who's missing on the map? It is Tastar in here. And out sure. he comes. So he's pretty safe when he comes out of this. But he still decided instead to retreat back to his minion wave. Just for that extra layer of safety. And talking about safety, uh, Alex the Proc and Jellic going for the siege camp. To put on a little bit of aggression here on the bot lane and uh, play a little bit safer down here since we do have that triple stack again. Uh, Hydra, Turok and QQQ. But they're not really pushing as hard as I thought they could. Um, because of the danger that uh, Arthas definitely puts out down here. Yep, Arthas just 
like you said, he just, his mere presence, due to the slow, due to the damage that he deals, he's actually one of the best uh, warriors when it comes to engaging and just dealing massive damage in a fight. We'll see here, onto the warrior have to do the decent amount of damage. That was without even using his Envenom. Yep, um, by the way, Envenom taken by Kerrigan Arthas. Yeah, Kerrigan and Arfith. Arfith. Um, Arfith. Arfith. <laughs> Right, Brightwing, of course, with bribe, and no other bribes have been taken. Let's yeah. have a look at the Muradin build here. It's perfect storm. Ripple hammer. Um, then a sledgehammer and piercing bolt. Yep, very standard build nowadays for Muradin. It just get the de if you hit heroes, you get the damage up. If you hit buildings, you're gonna wreck them. By the end of games, you're probably gonna be doing if you're if you get it up to a decent amount over 1,000 damage with each Q to any building you hit. And having a look at towers currently, with 3.3k health at this point in the game, it's going to go up with... I think it goes up uh, as the game progresses, doesn't it? Uh, tower health? Um, does it, does, do we have scale? to ask Ali if he's yeah. watching. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it. Like, hang on, what is it now? 3,350. Uh, 3, I will keep an eye on that and I'll check that later in the game. See if that goes up oh, over time. Oh, Jellic missing his root. Oh, a nice zombie wall here. But they don't really dish out the damage right now. Uh, with only Turek uh, in there to see, uh, heal, heal them back up. Yep, they really need stitches if they want to engage this. Yeah, seeing as Brightwing did not take in Venom, not able to even deal uh, some more damage there. In the top lane, though, Dez just going to keep being harassed by Kit Kat here. Nice dodge from the Q, though. And Kit Kat's going to be able to take control of this area. Brightwing just take, keep it in the bot lane, though, and they're going to try and use this as their opportunity to engage. There's the Ravenous Spirit. Very close range there. The Ultram is coming out from Jellic. What? Ultram is going on to Turret here. Doing a lot of damage. We're seeing Juddal having to pull back here. Insomnia phase shifting out of there. Turek does get taken down there. The Ultralisk, I've completely lost that. I have no idea where that's gone. I'm pretty sure it died. Jellic, though. Oh, Jellic is in trouble now. Dragon Knight went. The Dragon Knight, however, is still going to go over to Mad. Oh, Bloods. nice hook here on Juno. Bot lane enough. But QQQ and Hydra didn't have the mana to actually uh, dish out uh, way more damage. And they were also on, their, on the cooldowns for most of their skills. So no nice follow-up with a nice zombie wall or something. And they also need to stop uh, this Dragon Knight that's rotating into mid. But Alex the Proc is trying to get out of there. Yep, Napalm. Gonna be able to do some damage as he runs over it. But that was, not, that was nice for us. And seeing as all five members were there... Yeah, they're just forcing they him out of position. Back. They're forcing him from the bottom lane back to the mid lane and back again. Now the Dragon, uh, Dragon Knight is back, getting back in there. And yep, he's making his move. That's another... Fire onslaught and looks like the tower might burn down this time. Nope, not quite he yet. Has Ten seconds left of this dragon, so he'll use the last yep. fire to take that down, and we'll use the rest of time to get out of there and play it safe. In the meantime, Mad Corps just doing as much damage in this bottom lane as they can while they can. Yeah, I like how um, Tour QQQ and um, Hydra were able to keep this uh, bottom fort still alive. That's not not no small feat here, but now they have to fight the entire team. And they need a good position to make it happen. Two levels down. Ooh. And Des popped his ultimate. Hydra and QQQ there. QQQ pulled back. Didn't go back very far. But he knows most of the stuns are already down. But Kerrigan able to use her ability, uh, abilities again and take it down. Thanks to the rewind. Happy though took a lot of, lot of damage in this fight. QQQ still alive. Ooh. There's the blink heal from Brightwing. <laughs> able to save him in that last moment there. And that was actually very nice for both teams there. One down each. And we're actually going to see Yard Team save this fort again. Wow, what a clutch hold. I mean, it's it's incredibly close and I am I have no doubts whatsoever that they're going to get in there and just get the final blow on that fort. But still a good hold and uh, not losing. Did they lose anyone in that fight? I don't think uh, they did. They did. They lost, did uh, they lost Hammer, but she's alive again. Still a really good fight uh, for both teams. And that Ford is still alive, so I guess that Mad Corpse is gonna dive in there pretty soon. And maybe, maybe our team can make something happen since they know it's coming. But first, we have the Siege Giants in the bot lane, and also Siege Giants being taken here uh, by Insomnia and Jujunul. Yeah, we're seeing the teams heading back, just grabbing any mercenaries that are up at the moment, and spending some time just getting a bit of lane XP. Right now, there is one mercenary camp left on the map. And both teams won it. 
Let's see who can get in position first. I gotta give it to um, Hydra and QQQ. They should be able to contest this, no worries at all. Especially now that Mad Corps doesn't have the entire team in there. And Jujunul, he's caught out. Des gets on top of him, tries to body block him. Amazing body block. And there he goes down. It's still a little bit of a danger here. Pushing a little bit of damage, but nope. Uh, they can just take that Bruiser camp. And uh, we'll have the Mercenary advantage, but... They need to stop some mercenaries in the bot lane here. And Turok and Hydra are going just for the kill right now. Yep, Turok and Hydra once again protecting that fort very, very convincingly. Doing a good job. And they're actually just going to use these mercenaries in this bot lane to push. They have control of this bot shrine. There's no way they're going to lose that. Uh, they're going to lose the Dragon Knight yet to Mad Corps again. Mad Corps, though, with a very similar idea, are just going to push down the top lane with their Bruiser camp. They have slightly less people. We're actually seeing ta but Tastar is soaking XP in the mid lane for Mad Corps. Both teams probably going to lose a fort here. Yep, uh, that's the bottom fort going down. Uh, for Mad Corps, and they're just gonna storm on. They still have the Bruisers, and it's only Uther right now that's standing in their way, but Kerrigan also getting in there, and Insomnia also making a return here. So I don't think they're gonna they're gonna stress this too much. They're probably just gonna stick stick around until the gate is gone, up, and take their leave. Uh, by the way, um, someone just noticed that a putrid bile was taken here by um, by Stitches. It's a so it's a very interesting build for Stitches. It's actually um. It's actually very much the American style build, which just makes Stitches a lot more tankier. Yeah, rather than lots of the healing damage. And considering their team already has enough damage, it's pretty good. Like the increased, the 10% health regen onto your food, which is the first level talent combined with amplified healing, is a lot of health. Yeah, makes them really, really buff. Uh, gives them a lot of durability in these fights, and that's something they really need. I mean, with two specialists out there, you really want to have someone that can tank that damage for you. Indeed, and at level 20, we will be seeing Stitches, uh, seeing as he doesn't have Resurgence anymore, taking the healing, the self-healing, on his putrid vial, which is the level 20 upgrade for it. So yeah, we are going to be seeing a lot different, and good lord, I love Sergeant Hammer's new talent icons. They are amazing. Advanced Artillery, Maelstrom shells, but they look similar. That's, they, that's they basically the same icon. Yeah, but the, compared to what they used to be. Like, the icons are compared to... Yeah, they look really shiny now. Yep, and here we go. Jellic coming in here, trying to do damage. Happy so has thrown down his Cooper Bard, is already doing huge amounts of damage. The uh, Divine Storm only hits one person. It is the Fireman, he's able to teleport to the back there. QQQ doing too much damage. Alex the Prog is going in onto QQQ. QQQ sprinting out of there, is able to keep himself oh, alive. Oh, Death goes down on the right side. And Turok also falls here. Happy Zerg is in trouble as well. Just one more kill and... Oh, Hydra well, all by himself. Jellic goes down, but Hydra is caught out of position. Alex the Prog and Kit Kat able to take him down. And Mad Corps once again taking another fight. They finally took down that bottom four and are just going to push this lane a little bit more. Start, they're already taking that box run. Alex the Prog already in position to take yeah, they're the gonna, Dragon Knight. They're going to take the Dragon Knight now. They're in a perfect position. Uh, cooldowns are still up for about 15 seconds here on Stitches. And without Stitches, they can't really engage most of these fights. Uh, once they have ha Hammer back up and uh, Nazibo is already in there, they can at least put up some defense, but they're got definitely going to lose this fort and possibly a wall to their keeps here. Yeah, as someone pointed out, we're apparently uh, calling Alex the Proji, Alex the Prog. I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't, no it's a, it is Alex the Proji, but Alex the Prog is quicker. Just a bit of insight there. Alright, but he's not really making a move. I'm, maybe he just wants to bait them out. It looks like he wants to bait them out. Happy Zerg going for the hook, but not quite, not quite getting it. And now we have the entire team back here again. But they're not committing. They're not committing whatsoever. See if Mad Corps will. The team to arrive. Mad Corps looking to move in there. There's the hook onto Kit Kat, but without Gorge, there's not really much follow up for that. That is the issue with taking Vile Vile instead. We are, we do see the fishing hook there, so we are. Happy Zone is going to still be able to get some picks if he can get his team near enough. Alex the Frog in the chat, very nice. <laughs> but we're yeah. now seeing Mad Corps pulling back. They know they can't really get much here. Dragon Knight expires in seven seconds. They're moving to their mercenary camps so that they are prepared once that Dragon Knight expires. And they'll probably use the explosion here as the first hit onto it, but they don't spawn in time for that. Nah. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Bruiser Camp will also be taken. And in the meantime, Yard team are making their move in the bot lane, maybe trying to surprise um, 
Alex and Jujunul here at the siege camp. Yep, they can go for the steal. They're they can and go they for the steal, and it. they even get the kill. Go nice go polymorph. There comes the divine storm, but it's not gonna help. There's the steal and a kill. Good job. Easy going here. And this is exactly what your team needs. I mean, they're one and a half levels back. They need these easy wins right now. They need these easy kills, and um, a couple of XP their way um, really helps out. Very, very, very much so. And we did see a bit of a we did see a bit of a sprint there. And right now, we are seeing. Uh, your team pushing in, continuing to take down that keep in the bottom lane. There is two cast off, but it's still not going to be enough to save it. With Sergeant Hammer, there is no saving that. There are some bruises in the top lane, but we will see your, uh, your team head up there and clear that up very soon. There's also their own set of mercenaries on their side of the map and the bottom set of mercenaries to take control of. Yeah, they're going for the bottom side here. Um, the neutral one, the neutral bruiser camp, really important right now. And looks like Brightwing will go for a bribe here. Yep. So that's two of these, uh, two of these camps going towards that side. And what about that Bruiser camp? It's still up for grabs. And so far, Mad Carp's not really making a move. They're really forced to act in this bottom lane. Go for the Bruisers and defend the Sea Giants as well. But yep, so looking. does your team. Yep, your team taking their own br taking their own Bruisers. Now that they've cleared up the bruises of Mad Cops in the top lane. Shrines spawning in 10 seconds though. Yeah, Shrines are almost up and Mad Cops is almost level 20. So they might want to make another team fight happen here pretty soon. Once they get that additional XP in. And really work with their um, Storm Talents. Yep, Storm Talents will be coming up very, very soon for Mad Corps. That's and with the Shrines now up, this is the time they will be looking to try and engage and maybe take another Dragon Knight. And with that, they will probably attempt to end the game. We are seeing your team moving to the bot lane, and they're going to have to trade Shrines here if they want to prevent this Dragon Knight again. And we can see, we are seeing Mad Corps. They're moving as a team. They really want to force this team fight. Now level 20s are hit. The upgraded Ultra Disc has been... Excuse me, has been taken by Kerrigan. Bolts of Storm by Valor. Twilight uh, Archon by Tassadar. Divine Hurricane, obviously, by Ufa. And uh, I'm curious what the Arthas will take. We saw the chain attacks on the last Arthas we saw, but I'm not too sure. We'll probably see the ult upgrade this time. Yep, there is the ult upgrade. Yeah. Legion of Northend. Northrend, sorry. Yep, and almost half a level to go for Yard Team. So they ha still have a little bit of XP to gain before they, they get their level 20. And probably won't really engage in a team fight before then, but instead just trying to dodge, uh, yeah, just trying to dodge Mad Corpse, trying to take these shrines, and prevent any team fighting from going on. And there's the retreat back into main base. Sergeant Hammer trying to make a stand here, but oh, not by yourself. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Boost out of there. there. Get behind that gate, which is flimsy enough to breathe on and have it die. That will protect you. There comes the hook from Stitches, but it does not land on anyone. Mad Corpse playing this a bit too far back, and they're finally moving. They're still not moving to the top lane. They still are not going to be able to take the Dragon Knight yet. They're just grabbing all the mercenaries. Yep, just going for the mercenaries. And I think the second camp still has a lot of cooldown to go, so I think they will finally go for that top shrine if they can, or set up a trap if at all possible. Jellic already working down here. Nope, the siege camp. That's the next move. The Let's issue go for with the siege doing this is they're just giving um, your, t your team more time to get to level 20. Level 20 will, well, will be hit soon. Stick hook came in from Happy Soak there. Nice blink heal from Turek. To stop himself from oh, getting Jellic is in trouble. There comes the root. The shield, and, and he wow. still goes down. Healing totem coming down from Tassadar. Dez is way out of position here. He will get taken down. There's the storm shield. And QQQ. I don't think he's used his ult yet. I'm not sure. Let me click on him and find out. He hasn't used his ult yet. Saving it. Kick Kat goes down. There's the end. There's the Revenant Spirit. Finally coming out. Going on to Insomnia. Insomnia shielding himself. Does he have his face shift up? No, he. Well, he, now he does. But he uses it to sit to save himself. And he got out of range good fight first. For Yard so, team. yeah, amazing fight for Yard team. Definitely making a really good comeback. Even getting that siege camp now, and uh, with two heroes down, they could at least uh, try to take up the top fort. But instead, um, of course, also a solid option to just regrab these shrines and uh, go for a dragon knight camp here, or camp that dragon knight. Oh, but Arthas retaking the top shrine, and it's only Happy Zerg up here versus Uther and Arthas. Not really the best idea, but. 
QQQ also moving moving in there. They're still not willing to take the risk. They know how many people are alive, and because they don't have the vision, not choosing to take it, and they don't get their redemptors die at Turret. Wow. Take, I believe, the first Dragon Knight of the game for yep. Yard Team here, and going through the mid lane here, where pretty much everything is completely full health, but with the help of Sergeant Hammer and Nazibo, that's going to change very quickly. Yeah, they're definitely going to take up this fort. Um, at least as long as not not all of their heroes are playing here. Uh, Mad Corpse really needs everyone back in here. Kerrigan is joining and so is Valor. But Turk making a good job. Ooh, nice Divine Hurricane getting Happy Zerk. And ooh, he's going down. Wow, even with that, all that su sustainability doesn't really help. And Muradin also falls here. And QQQ in trouble. Taurus is on his back. Alex is as well. And there comes the Storm to finish him off. Yeah, that slow coming in from Arthas was so key there. And we did see Nunsbo try to sprint out, but he was accidentally body blocked by Hydra here. Was not able to do the damage. I'm seeing a visual picture of Brightwing's Link heal in the main base of uh, Yard Team there. That's weird. But right now, Hydra is the only surviving member of Yard Team. He's going to have to try and save the game here. In comes Brightwing, though, just respawning. Gonna try and get some heals down. There's the polymorph onto Jellic to prevent the burst damage coming onto Hydra, but everyone is on the core. They're just right focusing now. the core. They're just yeah, focusing the core. Jellic goes down. Turk and Hydra still in there. Um, just 20 seconds to go here for most of these heroes to make a return, but that's way too much damage on the core, and it looks like Mad Corpse can make it happen. Wow. Not a bad game for them, but I think you were right. Um, the moment where they just went for all the camps instead of going for the for the Dragon Knight, I gotta agree that that was a pretty clutch uh, clutch moment because our team could have made a t comeback happen. I could have made it happen, and uh, they almost 